Hi, everybody. It is May 6, 2019. I don't have much time at all to do this thoroughly. I will be passing along information that all of you around the Oroville Dam, anybody who is going to be impacted by a dam collapse, you want to bookmark the links that I'm going to be providing you. The links will be below this video in the description box. Now, a lot of people are very concerned for legitimate reasons. I do want to bring your attention to um, a comment that I got from somebody who sometimes I read these comments and I think, are people scared because they lash out at me for posting information? So, uh, so the comment that I got on my last Oroville Dam video was that I was fear-mongering and this guy here um, Blanco Lurio, I don't know, Lurio, whatever. Um, Oroville update. Well, he is posting videos on the Oroville Dam and says everything's fine, everything's great, everything's good. Well, I pointed out to this uh, person who viewed my video, I said, look, there are a lot of people who are very concerned. And when you have one person who is posting, hey, everything's good, everything's fine, and you have an awful lot of people um, and some who are experts like Scott Cahill posting on what's happening at the Oroville Dam, you want to take in all of the information. So when you see somebody who is just taking in the information from somebody who's all so positive and good and hey, fabulous, and they're refusing to look at all of the other information, you know that there's a fear in that brain and they don't want to take in the information that is upsetting. So don't do that, please. You, you want to take in all information and then weigh that information as best you can to assess the reality of what is taking place because it could save your life, right? Okay. Problem I have with this guy, Paradise Fires. He was flying over showing uh, the after effects of the fire and it was obvious what he was showing in his videos it was so obvious that this was not a natural forest fire but he never brought it up he never talked about hmm now this is very odd where'd the fire go you would think that the fire would be going in a in a you know a direction but it stops at a certain point or he showed areas where the homes were taken out, but never mentions all of the vegetation left untouched around particular neighborhoods. No. So I have questions about you know this man and what he is posting. All right. Um, this is a live cam. You want to be watching what is taking place. This is the hourly uh, data on how much water they are releasing and how high is the water table. So it's an hourly uh, record for you. May 6 at 8 o'clock a.m. and it's 12 um, PM here on the East Coast. You should be getting another record. Let's see if it came in. I don't know. I'll refresh. Uh, it did nine o'clock. Okay. The water is increasing in the lake. Increasing. You can see 886.77. At eight o'clock it was 886. 0.73 at uh, 7 o'clock it was 886.71 this is another um, site where they're recording the water level the red line is 2017 your green is 2018 and well the dark blue is now, 2019. So it overtopped 
at 902 and you're at that that was 2017 and you're at um, 886 right now so yeah you got a lot of ample ample supply of snow coming down to fill the lake even more all right I will link below to every video. Uh, you guys in this area, I think you need to listen to what is taking place. This is Paul Preston, who lives in Northern California. He being interviewed by Dave Hodges. And if, by the way the water is coming in, the rate at which the inflows and outflows go, we could see an overtopping within a week. And uh, that would spell extreme danger. Uh, this is something that has been repeatedly told to us and told to the public boldly and strongly that this would never happen. And uh, here it is, we're just uh, really uh, less than 20 feet from it happening. So this is a, a critical moment. And uh, clearly the everybody in the state of California, anybody in the world has been bald faced, lied to uh, by, by the California Department of Water Resources. Uh, and you know, you, you look at the way they've lied what they've done, the way they rolled out the whole spillway situation, uh, you really have to wonder if this isn't criminal, a very big criminal act uh, right, in, right going on. But we hope that it's not. We hope that they, they can wake up tomorrow and um, the spillways, you know, really rushing the water out at, you know, 150,000 cubic feet per second, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, um, and by the way, yeah, looking at the rate of water that would have to come off the spillway right now or tomorrow uh, to try and prevent the overtopping would probably mean they'd have to be at that 150 level, 150,000 uh, uh, cubic feet per second. And right now they can't even run 1,000 feet off of it. What do you mean they can't run 1,000 feet off of it? And 1,000 feet as compared to what? <laughs> well, a uh, thousand cubic feet uh, per second, it doesn't okay. look like they can even run that much, uh, let alone 150,000. And by the way, the dam was designed for 269,000 cubic feet per second. That's what the, the spillway was designed for. Now, this is the spillway that actually ruptured in 2017 on February 7th when the plates on the spillway popped out because there was uh, water built up behind the spillway through the mountain that had seeped through from the from the Lake Orville through the mountain to the spillway. It popped it out. When, when they started running water over the spillway, it creates a, um, a suction very similar to like a, a foil on an airplane wing when, you know, the, wind, the, the air goes over the top of it, it creates lift. It does the same thing with water. Uh, over the top of the spillway, it creates lift. And when it did that, it sucked a lot of water in from the dam behind it through the soil and pushed out the plates and it created a huge hole. And that huge hole uh, created a canyon, literally. And all, we almost lost the dam uh, by February uh, 12th. And um, that is, we're in a very similar situation right now. We've never been this high on the, on the, uh, on the spillway or uh, under these circumstances. It has gone to this level before, but under these circumstances, um, never before. Right now, there really is a damaged spillway because when they opened up and built the spillway and replaced it, they didn't do some fundamentals, and that was to, to repair or prevent the water from seeping from the lakeside through the mountainside to the back of the spillway. So when you have water seeping through uh, like that it creates a lot of pressure behind it and when you run the water over the spillway you can see what happens you get a combination of water pressure sucking it up and water pressure from behind pushing it out and um, so when they rebuilt the spillway they spent 1.5 billion dollars doing this uh, mountains of concrete and rebar and everything uh, they had a big dramatic opening on April 2nd and they brought the amount of water down. They started it out very slowly at 2,000 to 4,000 and working it up, which is a you know pretty good way to do things. And pretty soon uh, they started running more and more water over it. And uh, some people say they started to test it. They actually advertised that they would be doing some testing on it. 
and uh, they came out and they said maybe some of the levels be, would be as high as 60,000 cubic feet per second on the test. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, they ran it over time and they started getting a lot of harmonic vibrations underneath the dam itself, which meant that the soil was liquefying underneath it and drawing in a lot of water. And we filed a lawsuit at the time because uh, we, we wanted them to cease using explosives around the spillway uh, as part of their construction project and because that created a lot of vibrations and so on, so much so that the United States Geological Survey uh, actually had recordings of small earthquakes that were recorded, very clearly recorded by the USGS around the exact same spots where these explosions had been set during the construction. Well, that You know, it's explosions and I'm wondering if they're using those explosions for uh, that, you know, plausible deniability. I have taken a lot of captures of extremely low frequencies being set off in your in in California in all of California. The radar is just exp <laughs> it's really remarkable what is taking place. I have never seen it quite like it is operating now. And that has been for the last six weeks. I want to get to California. I've been focusing pretty much on the flood states. But um, you can see the extremely low frequencies being set off in Northern California right around the Oroville Dam, right here. And I have been noticing what is taking place. I didn't stay with it long enough for you to really get a glimpse, but here um, right here is the area where the Oroville Dam is, but these extremely low frequency radar is being set off in California, the entire California area, like I've never seen it before. Why would they do that when extremely low frequencies can cause earthquakes? Why are they doing that to an area where you're, you know, bombarded with the big one? It's not if, but when right? The earthquake. So here we go again. Oroville area, extremely low frequencies, but look at the powerful, powerful, intense pulsating from our Doppler radar stations. And I've posted a lot of videos on um, how dangerous these pulsating frequencies are. Coming from extremely low frequencies, coming from Gwen Towers and transmitter sites, but also the frequencies coming from Doppler radar, military documents, military studies on the biological effects of radar. This was uh, taking place on the 4th at what time? 10.50. Now, whatever was going on in Nevada, I do not know. I do not know. Never seen this before. Is that showing just very intense frequencies? I don't know, but these pulsating frequencies really can cause tremendous damage. Let me see. Yep. Um, there's no other. Okay. Uh, let's. This is. Um, again, I was really focusing on all of the weather that's taking place, so kind of lost focus on California, but these pulsating frequencies have been going on for um, I'd say about six weeks in California. Wrong video.
All right, I've posted videos on the extremely low frequencies being set off in in California, so you guys know it. And here they are again. When you see these extremely defined fanned out lines, you know the cutouts. Uh, those are extremely low frequencies, and they have been rippling right on through all of Carol, uh, all of California. So when they're talking about vibrations, when they're talking about the liquefied soil, when they're talking about explosions causing earthquakes, well, so can the extremely low frequencies. So you're talking about major um, upset, disturbance in that area where the dam is. I want to bring your attention to Susan Molding, who is uh, covering what is taking place, um, researching in pictures of the Oroville Dam and what is going on right now. This is not good news, and everyone must pass the word. Get it out, because they are taking measures now to use the emergency spillway, and the spillway is not in good shape. And she does point out an awful lot of these uh, well, there's seepage, there's moisture, there's cracks, um, and look at this. It does not look like it's in very good shape, and this was posted um, May 4th. So you want to take a look at this video. Um, also, Harvey Dent's fact finder, Oroville Dam Spillway not stress tested. This was April 29, and he talks about how the water level is just rising. Very dangerous, and here. Oroville Dam begins to fail when lake levels reach 908 feet. Seems a little hard to believe, but this is information that comes directly from their documents and from information they provided in their press conferences. They don't like to make the information so clear, but uh, we've provided all the sources, links, and information so you can see it at our potterblog.com website. Uh, you'll see that link to the information in the uh, bottom of the video. But uh, the short of it is, is that Oroville dam failures will begin at the emergency spillway when lake levels reach 908 feet. Same goes for the main spillway. At 899 foot lake level, it only takes six inches of rain in 21 hours to reach the 908 foot failure point. Basically that means if the dam is full and impending going over the emergency uh, spillway, it only takes uh, six inches of rain in the 21 hour period to pop the levels up to 908 feet where the uh, emergency spillway and the main spillway will start to fail. And you know how easy it is for them to create six inches in 21 hours. All right, so there are many people who are questioning what the hell is going on. This here was posted May 5 yesterday. Oroville Dam imminent failure again. Okay, uh, these are some of the uh, questions that a lot of people are having about what is taking place, what they have seen with the workers uh, and the work being done. They have removed most of the vegetation from the hillsides on both sides of the main spillway and also from much of the slope below the emergency spillway area. They have also done extensive excavation, grading, removal of rock and soil, terracing, and even some blasting in those areas, it seems to me that much of that work runs the risk of destabilizing the hillside. So why have they done those things? And I am, again, pointing out, uh, then add in extremely low frequencies, which can cause earthquakes. Uh, even done some drilling and blasting in the rock under the main spillway, not too far from the main spillway gates. Now that the main spillway repair and reconstruction are complete, it is obvious that there are multiple unexplained cracks and leaks from one end to the other, from top to bottom. The Department of 
water resources and fellow travelers say that all is well, not to worry, things are just planned, fellow travelers, he takes a motorcycle ride, all is well, look at the dam, it's fine. Um, Department of Water Resources opened the spillway gates in April 2019, a month ago, to test the spillway and gates. They only released 25,000 cubic, um, cubic feet per second and shut the spillway down after only a few days. They have not reopened the main spillway since, though they have continued to extensively work on the emergency spillway area. Peculiar behavior raises obvious questions as to whether something is wrong with the new and improved spillway and with the gates or both. If the spillway is in operating condition, why not use it? If the gates are in good working order, why not open them? Is the plan perhaps to avoid use of the main spillway and spillway gates and to rely instead on the emergency spillway? If so, why? Every couple of days, the reservoir water level has been edging up another foot. Clearly, if the main spillway remains closed, the day is coming soon when the emergency spillway may overtop again, as it did previously in February 2017. This is not fear-mongering. This is just passing along information. And all of you in that area, you need to assess Unfortunately, you cannot rely on your officials, your government officials, to tell you what is going on. We have been lied to all the time, repeatedly. Those lies ended up causing an awful lot of people to die, you know, to lose their homes. Look, do not rely on your government officials. And do not rely on one source that gives you information that you like hearing. Take in all of it and then prepare. Prepare for anything that could happen. All right, all links are below. You guys have a great day. I'll see you later.